I often see questions like, how do I know if my attachment system is reacting defensively in survival mode or my inner being is trying to speak to me through my intuition? Let's call this section anxiety in the body. In this next segment, I'm gonna talk about emotions as an expression of your life force energy following the framework established by Anita Judith in her book called Charge and the Body. We're going to explore how you can determine if your body is over or undercharged and how to discharge or charge up your body as needed. We're gonna talk about how attachment styles reflect being in survival mode, which always throws you into an over or undercharged state. And we're gonna talk about how to think about the mind-body connection so that your thoughts and your emotional reactions move you towards a state of equilibrium and problem solving instead of imbalance and let's call it pain amplification. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Brianna McWilliam and I am a licensed and board certified creative arts therapist, author, and educator with more than 15 years in the field helping adults struggling with insecure attachment go from self-doubting to self-sovereign so they can attract those soul-shaking passionate partnerships that they want. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a clip of a live stream event that took place inside my private Facebook groups, which people can access once they've purchased one of my online courses. If you're interested in finding out if you might have insecure attachment, check out the link in the caption of this video. You'll be able to take an easy four question quiz and find out your attachment style, plus a detailed explanation. Now, if you like what you see in here and you haven't yet, make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. I put up videos once or twice a week, and sometimes I will do occasional live streams through my YouTube channel, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So first, I want to address these questions through the framework that Anita Judith offers in her book called Charge and the Energetic Body. And in this book, she talks about a rapidly growing field called energy psychology. And this addresses the flow of life force energy as the primary root of problems like feeling emotionally overwhelmed or having traumatic memories, habits, addictions, um, experiencing compulsive thinking, limiting beliefs, anxiety and depression, insomnia, physical pain, and even allergic reactions. So Judith refers to this as life force energy or charge in the body. And the idea is that if you can redirect the flow of energy or charge, thoughts and behaviors start to change. Now the Association for a Comprehensive Energy Psychology has cataloged more than 100 studies, analyses and articles, which provide evidence to support the effectiveness of energy healing practices and methods. So if you're interested in learning more about that, just give me a like um, and I can put a link to that in the caption of this video. Now, in energy healing practices, and incidentally, I'm a certified Reiki practitioner, so that's in part why I bring this kind of framework to the discussion. In energy healing practices, chakras and meridians work together to kind of function like an energy delivery system throughout your body. So they can carry, you know, pulses or vibrations of energy along pathways, which I'm gonna refer to as your chakras, that are kind of like the main highway, okay? So they carry these trucks full of goods, right, your energy, um, and they move along the highways or the back roads in order to distribute energy in a balanced, harmonious, and equivalent way, right? But if that flow of energy gets disrupted, maybe there's a traffic jam or an accident, then certain places don't receive the food that they need and other places get backed up, right? So over time, those areas become undernourished and or we might say undercharged and the backed up areas have, um, are overcharged, right? They become excessive. So when you are undercharged, it could feel like a lack of animation. Um, you could feel listless. There could be a low body temperature. You could feel vacant or empty or kind of spaced out. You might dissociate or not feel present you might appear to be generally withdrawn person. You may speak with kind of a low or hushed or subdued voice. You might feel tired a lot or have a lack of motivation. Um, there may even be a sense of numbness or emptiness or depersonalization about you. Now, Judith also refers to this as having what she calls overbound or constricted energy. Um, and so you might even constrict your body, right? 
So to charge yourself up, you need to bring energy from the periphery into the core, or what she describes as from the outside in. Um, and she says that this has to be done gradually, however, um, while observing whatever your tolerance is for assimilating this new energy that you are bringing in, because if you move too quickly, you might um, overshoot, right? And then all of a sudden, you have blown a circuit, okay? So increasing your charge on purpose um, could include things like resting, eating and digesting, reading, focusing on the breath. Um, it could also be working with your hands, listening to music. Um, it could be receiving healing touch, like through Reiki or massage, basically feeding the senses, right? Now, when you're overcharged, Sometimes that looks like anxiety, panic, rage, overwhelm, shakiness, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, rapid heart rate, difficulty thinking, um, and it could also lead to a form of dissociation. And Anita Judith refer refers to this as a form of unbound energy. So the goal in this case would be to discharge energy, and that means moving energy from your core out to the periphery. So lowering or discharging some of that energy um, is required so that you can return to a level of comfort. So for example, if you have anger you know, in the heart space, you can express that through the arms, right? So I like to go to my local wrecking club to do this. So I like to like swing a bat or a, a crowbar and smash things and things like that. Um, you could punch a pillow, right? Or you could also reach out for a hug from a friend. Maybe you have a lot of fear, so you might try to move that down the legs. So you might stomp around or kick or run or dance or go for, or, or exercise, a vigorous exercise to try to discharge some of that extra energy. So the other thing that Anita jo Judith points out is that energy in essence emanates from our core. And she describes the core as a column of energy and you'll learn, there's, they also talk about this in tantric traditions of yoga, that you'll have a column of energy that winds up and energy you know, path that winds down. So this is our liberating current of energy and this is our manifesting current of energy. And they combine to make up the core of our energy in our spinal column, okay? Now, um, she refers to this as our innate and vital self, the energy that gets activated in that column. I refer to this as your true self or your essential self or your higher self or source, your source connection, right? Could be spirit or your soul. It's a little bit of a nuance in there, but it's not quite relevant to this discussion. Um, but in essence, it's made up of universal energy on the one hand, it's this paradox. It's made up of the thing that everything is made up of and yet, it also expresses itself unique to your experience, right? Unique to your expression of self. And so instinctually, we will do whatever we need to do in order to protect that core, right? And our core is surrounded by these fleshy bodies, okay? And so our bodies we are able to utilize in order to protect that core from various forms of energy as well. So in the body, that's where we tend to create layers of defenses so that we can protect that essence. So for example, if your childhood environment was toxic, you tend to do, you tended to do whatever was in your power to keep that energy from harming your core. On the other hand, if you were led to believe that the world within you was toxic, right? So you were either shamed, you were shamed for having an emotional expression, for example, then the body will use its muscular energy to keep the core from coming out, right? So it, we don't let things in or we don't let things out. So the body becomes this kind of mediator. It's an organizer of experience and it uses muscular contractions to keep energy in and to keep energy out. This kinesiology um, kind of works with this. So these defenses can rob your core of some of its energy um, because it's consuming a lot to maintain these defenses, this kind of body armor. Now, our consciousness can get a lot more caught up in our defenses, um, and that makes it hard for us to access our core wisdom, right? Um, and, and, and we know that our consciousness is caught up in defenses 
if we can witness the nature of our thoughts. Are they limiting beliefs? Are they thoughts that are typically critical or judgmental of us and of others, right? And when we get lost in those thoughts, now we start to become increasingly disconnected from our vital core energy, okay? Um, so this basically means that we have two primary goals, and that is that we wanna try to remain grounded within ourselves um, while we are running energy or charge through our bodies. And we want to try to run our charge through the core of our body, okay? Um, because that is a much more organizing way to express it, okay? So it might be necessary to charge or discharge ourselves a little bit so that our overall charge starts to maintain a more, you know, manageable volume, okay? Um, and this is how Anita Judith would just basically describe emotional regulation because typically we are clued into the nature of our charge through the expression and the experience of our emotions and our feelings. So emotions are very important because they are like giant road signs that point us towards the current state of our charge and its proximity to our core, which means acknowledging your emotions can provide you information that is necessary to discovering the solution for whatever struggle you may be laboring under, 